Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom to everyone that's out there tonight. Uh, I want to say thank you for, um, you know, coming out tonight for this Shabbat. Uh, hopefully you've been blessed through this week. You know, as it says, you shall work six days and on the seventh day you shall rest. With that being said, um, of course, I like to pray for anybody that's there. If you feel like you need prayer or something like that, you can always send an email to followersofyahweh at gmail.com. And of course, I will pray for each one of you out there too. Um, with that being said tonight, uh, let's go ahead and start out with our prayer. And we'll see where the Father leads us tonight. So, Abba Father, we thank you for this night. We thank you for allowing us to work six days. And as you said, we shall rest on the seventh day. As we go into our Shabbat this, you know, this day, Father, we, we thank you. And we give you all the honor and glory, Father for allowing us to work through the six days to be able to come into this day, to be able to have this relationship with you, Father. We thank you and we give you all the honor and glory, Father. And we also thank you, Father, for allowing us to be the light of the world, Father. We ask this to be able to use us, give us to keep us our, you know, strong into your faith, Father, and allow our salt to be even saltier. Allow our light to be even brighter, Father, as we are out in the world, Father, during the six days and on the seventh day. Allow us to be recharged in you, Father. And allow us to have that relationship, Father. We ask for your grace and mercy, Father. And we ask this in your son's name as we pray. Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. So, uh, so tonight's message is, before I, before I form thee in the belly, I knew thee. And we're going to see where is this, what is this talking about? This is a, a an actual Torah portion. Um, it's called a Parsha of Talbot. Um, and we're going to take a look at this tonight and see what it means. There is a, there is a deeper meaning and we're going to take a look at that deeper meaning uh, tonight. So this is the birth of Esau and Jacob, as we all know. It says in Genesis 25, 19, uh, and this is, and these were the generations of Isaac and the son, or I'm sorry, Isaac and the son of Abraham, Abraham, the father of Isaac. Uh, and Isaac was the son of 40 years when he took Rebekah, the daughter of Bethel, and the America of Padam Aram, the sister of Laban, the Amoranian to him for a wife. And Isaac prayed to Yah on behalf of his wife, for he, for she was barren, and Yah was 
entreated for him, and his wife Rebekah conceived, and the son struggled together within her. And she said, it, If this is right, why am I this way? And she went to inquire of Yah. And Yah said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and even two people shall break from your body, and one person shall be stronger than the other person, the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And her days you were fulfilled to bear, and behold, twins were in her womb. And the first came out of him red like a hairy robe, and they called him the name Esau. And afterwards his brother came out, and his hand was holding to his heel, and to the heel of Esau, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was a son of sixty years when she bore them. And the boys grew up, and Esau became a man knowing hunting, a man of the field. And Jacob was a simple man living in tents. And Isaac loved Esau, for game was in his mouth. And Rebekah loved Jacob. Esau sells his birthright, and Jacob boiled soup. And Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Please let me eat at the, of the red this red soup, for I am faint, on account of this name is called Adam. And Jacob said, Sell me your birthright today. And Esau said, Behold, I am going to die, and what good is this, a birthright to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me today. And, we, and he swore to him, and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave bread and soup of lentils to Esau. And he ate and drank and rose up and left. And Esau despised the birthright. And a famine, a famine was, the, was in the land besides the famine in those days of Abraham and Isaac. And went to Abimelech king of the Philistines to Gerar. And Yah appeared to him and said, Do not go down into Egypt, but dwell in the lands which I shall say to you. Stay in the land, and I will be with you and bless you. For, for to you and to your seed I will give all these lands, and I will cause to rise my oath which I swore to you, father, to your father. And I will increase your seed like the stars of the heavens, and I will give to your seed all the lands and all the nations. And earth, shall, and earth shall bless those themselves and your seed. Because Abraham listened to my voice, and he heeded my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my Torah. And it says, Isaac lived in Gerar, and the man of the place asked about his wife. And he said, She is my sister. For he was afraid to say, My wife, lest the man of the place kill him on account of Rebekah. For she was beautiful of form. And it happened when his days were many to, to him, there Abimelech king of the Philistines looked through the window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with his wife, Rebekah. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, See, surely she is your wife. And, I, and, and how have you said she is my sister? And, and Isaac said to him, Because I said, lest I die on account of her. And Blemick said, What is this that you have done to us? One of the people had in a little lane with your wife, and you would have brought us a skill. And Blemick commanded all the people, saying, Anyone touched this man and his wife surely shall die. And Isaac swode, swode into land, and a hundredfold was found in that year, and Yah blessed him. And the man grew great and he went on going to be great until he became exceedingly great and possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and many slaves were his and the philistines envied him and all or envied him and all the wells which the slaves of his father dug in the days of his father abraham the philistines had stopped them and filled them with dirt so that's why, if you remember the teaching uh, before, they were talking about all the wells and stuff like that, and some of the wells were dried up. Well, they weren't really dried up. They were filled up with the dirt, as we see. And it says, Abelimek said to Isaac, Go from us, 
for you are stronger than we. And Isaac went from there and camped in Gerar Valley and lived there. And Isaac returned and dug the wells of water which they dug in the days of his father. And Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called names to them like the names which his father had called them. And Isaac's slaves dug in the torrent bed, and they found there a well of flowing water. And, he, and the shepherds of Gerar fought with the shepherds of Isaac, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Constantine, for they had continued with him, and they contended with him. And they dug from another well, and they also fought over it. And he called it the name Opposition. And he moved from there and dug another well, and he did not fight over it. And he called it the name of Broad Places. And he said, For now Yah has brought in for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. And he went from there to Beersheba. And Yah appeared to him in the same night and said, I am the Elohim of your father Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you, and I will bless you. Increase your seed because of my servant Abraham. And he built an altar there and called on the name of Yah. And he pitched his tent there. And the slaves of Isaac dug a well there. And Ablemic went to him from Gerar and his aide Azuz and Pichol, the general of his army. And Isaac said to them, Why have you come to me, since you hate me and sent me away from you? And they said, Since we plainly have seen Yah, Yah has been with you, we have said, let there be an oath now between us, between us and you, and let us cut a covenant with you. For whether you do will do will us evil, and we do not touch you, and as we did only good with you, and we sent you away in peace, you now being blessed of Yah, and he made a feast for them, and they ate and drank, and they started up early at dawn, and each swore to his brother, and Isaac sent them away, and they left in him in peace. And it happened on that day, Isaac's slaves came out and told him about the well which they had dug, and said to him, We found water. And he called it Sheba. The name of the city is the well of Sheba until this day. And Esau was a son of the forty years, and he took a wife, Judith, the daughter of Bere and Hidi, and also Basmeth, the daughter of Alon, the Hidi, and they were a grief of spirit to Isaac and to Rebekah. Isaac blessed Jacob. And it happened when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim, for seeing he called his elder son Esau and said to him, My son, he said to him, I am here. He said, Behold, now I am old. I do not know the day of my death. And now please lift up your weapons, your quiver, and your bow, and go to the field and hunt game for me, and make for me savory meat, such as I love, and bring to me, and I will eat, so that my soul may bless you before I die. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spoke to his son Esau, and Esau went to the field to hunt game, to bring it in. And Rebekah spoke to her son Jacob, saying, Behold, I heard your father speaking to your brother Esau. Bring game to me and make delicious meat that I may eat, that I may bless your foot before Yah, before my death. And now, my son, fear my voice, that which I command you. Go now to the flock and bring me from the two, gold, two good kids of the goats, and I will make you, them into delicious things for your father which he loves and you shall bring it to him to your father and let him eat so that he may bless you before his death and jacob said to his mother Re or rebecca behold my brother esau is a hairy man and a smooth man and i am a smooth man perhaps my father will fill me and i shall be like a deceiver in his eyes and i shall bring a curse on me and not blessing and his mother said to him your curse be on me, my son. Only listen to my voice and go, take from me. And he went and took and came to his mother. And his mother made savory meat, such as his father loved. 
And Rebekah took the clothing of her elder son, Esau, the, clo the costly of ones which were within the house, and she dressed her younger son, Jacob, and she put the skin on the kids of the goats of the, his hands, and the smoothness on his neck, and she put the savory meat, and the bread which she had made in the hand of her son, Jacob. And he went to his father and said, My father, he said, I am here. Who are you, my son? And Jacob said to his father, I am your firstborn, Esau. I have done as you said to me. Rise up now, sit and eat on my game, so that your soul may bless me. And Isaac said to his son, How then have you so quickly found it, my son? And he said, Because Yah, your Elohim, made it come to me. And Isaac said to Jacob, Come near now and let me fill you, whether then you are my son Esau or not. And Jacob came near to his father Esau. And he felt him, and he said, The voice is the voice of Jacob, and the hands are Esau's hands. And he did not know him, because his hands were like the hairy hands of his brother Esau. And he blessed them. And he said, Are you then my son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring to me, and let me eat at my son's game, so that my soul may bless you. And he came near to him, and he took and he ate, and he came to him, and he drank wine. And his father Isaac said to him, Now come and kiss me, my son. And he came near, and he kissed him. And he smelled the smell on his clothes, and he blessed him, and said, The smell of my son is as the smell of a field, which Yah has blessed. And may Elohim give you of the dew of the heavens and of the faith, fatness of the earth much grain and wine. My, may the nations serve you and peoples bow to you, be a ruler of your brothers. And may your mother's son bow to you and curse be those who curse you and bless be those who bless you. And it happened that when Isaac had made an end of the blessing, Jacob, then it came about that Jacob had hardly left his father Isaac and his brother Esau came in from his hunting and he also made savory meat and he came to his father and he said to his father let my father rise and eat from the game of his son so that your son may bless me and the father of Isaac said to him who are you and he said I am your son your firstborn Esau and Isaac was terrified with a very great, great anxiety he said who then was the one who hunted game and came to me and I ate from it and all before you came and blessed him ye shall be blessed when Esau heard the words of his father he cried out in great very bitter cry and he said to his father bless me also my my father and he said your brother came with deceit and took your blessing and he said it because he his name is called Jacob and his twice he took me by the heel and defrauded me. He took my bright or birthright and he behold now he has taken my blessing. And he said, Have you not re reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said to Esau, Behold, I sent him over you as a ruler, and I have given you all his brothers for servants. I have girded him the grain and wine. And what then can I do for you, my son? And Esau said to his father, Is one blessing left to you, my father? Bless me also, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And his father Isaac answered and said to him, Behold, your dwelling should be from the fat of the earth, from the dew of the heavens above, and you shall live by your sword, and you shall serve your brother. And when it shall be that you have the dominion, you shall break his yoke from your neck. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing which his father had blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of my mourning from my father are near. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. And the words of her, of her older son Esau were told to Rebekah. And she sent and sent and called her younger son Jacob and she said to him behold your brother Esau is going to ease himself on you to kill you 
And now, my son, listen to my voice, and rise, flees for yourself to my brother Laban, to Haran, and stay with him some day until your brother's fury turns away, until your brother's anger turns back from you, and he forgets what you have done to him. And I will send and take you from there. Why should I also be revered of two of you in one day? And Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life from the daughters of Heth. If Jacob takes a wife from the daughters of Heth, like these from the daughters of the land, what is my life to me? So what is the deeper? Oh, I want to make sure. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, we forgot this. Uh, we skipped the next one. And it says, Isaac called Jacob, and he blessed him and commanded him and said to him, You shall not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan. Go up, go to Padan Aram, up to the house of Bethel, your, your mother's father, and take a wife for yourself. From there, from your daughter of Laban, the brother of your mother, and may El Shaddai bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you, and may you become assembly of people. Remember that, assembly of people. And may he give to you the blessing of Abraham, to you and to your seed with you, and to possess the land of your travels, which Elohim gave to Abraham. And Isaac sent away Jacob. And when he he went to Padan Aram, to Laban, the son of Bethel, and Remiam, the brother of Rebekah, the mother of Jacob, and Esau. And Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and had sent him away, to Padam Aram to take a wife for himself from there. In his blessing he had commanded him, saying, You shall not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan. And that Jacob listened to his father and his mother and went to Padam Aram. And when Esau saw that the daughters of Canaan were evil in his eyes of his father Isaac, then Esau went to Ishmael and took Makalah, the daughter of Ishmael, the son of Abraham. The Naboth sister to his wives, he added her for his wife. So, as we said, this is this is the Parsha Tadal. And what we're looking at is the verse 25, Genesis 25:21. And it says, Isaac prayed to Yah on behalf of his wife, for she was barren, and Yah was entered, entered, entreated. For him and his wife Rebecca conceived. So, if we look at this, the basic, the parsha, uh, means Isaac. He Isaac prayed, and he and entreated much with prayer. When Yah allowed him to be entreated and play and placated and swayed by him, I say that every expression ethar is an expression of entry and an increase. So. Basically, prayer works. If you don't have a prayer life, you ain't getting nothing. So as you can see, you know, Isaac prayed is the basic meaning of this. He prayed for his wife and she conceived. Okay. So, you know, just like you, if you have anything that you need, you need to bring it to the Father and you need to pray. So this is the basic meaning. Okay. The opposite, his wife this one, Isaac was standing in his in this corner and praying, and that one, Rebecca, was standing in that corner praying. So we see they are praying and praying, okay? And it says accepted his prayer. Okay. But not hers, for the prayer of a righteous man, the son of a righteous man, does not compare to the prayer of a righteous man. The son of a wicked man, therefore he accepted his prayer and not hers. Okay, so we have basically a saying that they both prayed, but because, you know, Rebecca was wicked, so Yah accepted Isaac's prayer over Rebecca. Like I said, this is the basic meaning, the prashat. The remez, this is the hinted meaning. It says, in Bahala, and Rebecca, his wife, conceived. The gematria, okay, of Ista, his wife, equals 707. It says, equals that of Kashav, the straw and fire, a reference to Esau 
and Jacob, about whom it is written, The house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for straw. And we see that in Obadiah 1.18. And also, if you look below in the picture, this is Exodus 32.4. These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Drash. Okay. The drash is an interpretive meaning. This is a, a, a little bit deeper meaning. Okay. And Isaac went to the mountain of worship, the place where his father had found, bound him. And Isaac, in his prayer, turned Yah attention away from that which he had decreed concerning him and his wife that he that they be unable to bear children okay so he basically telling you know yeah that they're not able to have children you know he's decreeing that and then it says Rebecca his wife conceived the meaning of this is the reason the Torah does not mention the usual unusual um, yeah unusual Isaac knew his wife prior to telling that she conceived may have been that they prayed within three days of having marital relations. The prayer was that the semen should not go to waste. So, as you can see, so basically, you know, as one part of the a sexual act, when you're having the intimacy, you shouldn't spill the seed, okay? And that's what they're trying to reference here is that if you're going to have that act and then you should not waste the seed so this is the prayer within that three days that time period they were trying to ask for a prayer to have a baby so that it would not be wasted okay and then it says and isaac prayed to yah facing his wife so this means that isaac asked for children in the merit of his wife rebecca she was known to him to be a miraculous being full of power and his prayer was the power be be revealed okay so as you can see this is as, like i said it's a it's a little bit in deeper meaning you know now we are going even deeper to the abyss okay this is the abyss and this is the, what they call the sod the mystical meaning the serotic okay and asad and the isaac entreated Yah for his wife. What is the meaning of he treated, entreated? That he offered a sacrifice and prayed for her? What offering did he sacrifice? A burnt offering? By studying the verses, and Yah has entreated of him, and so Yah was entreated for the land, we see in 2 Samuel 24-25, there it means that a sacrifice has been offered. Here too, it means a sacrifice has been offered. Okay, and it says, and it was accepted as it is, as it, it, it um, as it is written. Isaac entreated, and Yah was entreated. A supernal fire that came to meet the lower fire. Okay, another explanation for, an ex uh, Isaac entreated is that by his prayer, he howled out a passage that reached above the mazal the bestels of children it is upon the place that giving birth to children depends as it is written she prayed to above yah and then yah was entreated of him do not read entreated as verater but rather as howled out vahater for yah cleared the way and accepted the prayer then rebecca his wife conceived Come and see, Isaac was with his wife for 20 years, but she did not give birth until he had said his prayer. This is because Yah desires a prayer of righteousness. When they ask him in prayer for their needs, why? Because the anointing oil would be increased by the prayer of the righteous for all those who need it. So, as you can see, you know, the, your prayers are answered. So if you need a healing, you need to go to the Father. You need to pray on that. Ask the Father. If you need finances, 
you know go to the father and pray and ask for our finances you know if your enemies attack you go to the father and praise him and ask for wisdom to show you what you should do as you can see prayer was answered until they you know they or he went to pray for his wife you know then she was able to have a child until that time she wasn't going to have a child okay and it says come and see abraham did not pray before Yah, so that he would give his sons and even though sarah was barren on although it may have said that he prayed saying behold to me you gave no seed in genesis 15 3 it is not a prayer but simply a statement to his master but isaac prayed for his wife because he knew that his wife not he was sterile and although isaac knew by the inner meaning of wisdom that jacob was bound to come from him and produce the 12 tribes he did not know whether this would be from this wife or from another therefore the scripture reads for his wife and not specifically for rebecca Tadal is the only portion that in that puts Isaac at the center of the action. Yet it jumps right into the next generation. The portion begins in the birth of Isaac and Rebekah, twin son Jacob and Esau. Like Sarah, before her, Rebekah is deemed to be barren, but the miraculous gives birth later in life. It's a difficult pregnancy, she inquires of the internal and finds out that she's carrying twins. The first called and the first child emerges all red and hairy in his name Esau. The second boy comes out holding on to his brother's heel. He is named Jacob from the Hebrew word meaning when they grow up Esau becomes a hunter, a man of the field. Jacob described as a mild man who preferred to remain back in the camp. Isaac favored Esau because uh, Rebecca prefers Jacob to this text of partial favoritism and sibling rivalry serves as the backdrop for the complex relaxation and tra tragic events that follow. Jacob takes advantage of a weakened Esau and gets him to sell his birthright for a bowl of lentils. Later, famine forces the family to leave Canaan and travel to Gerar. Isaac and Rebecca repeat the third time second with Abelak, the wife and sister confusion of of abraham and sarah and then they must deal with some issues of water rights left over from abraham now wealthy they end up settle, settling in Beersheba, where god appears to isaac and Abelak, the king of the gerar establishes a treaty with him this section ends with the news that esau at the age of 40 married to two hitty women they are described as being a source of bitterness to isaac and rebecca the story continues sometime later when isaac is called old and blind fearing the end of his days is near he called his son, oldest son esau to receive his final blessing but first he thinks esau to hunt and prepare him some game rebecca overhears this request and while esau is out in this field she prepares the food and dresses jacob and like his brother and sends him to receive the special blessing in esau's place esau comes in later and it is then that he and his father isaac realize that they have been tricked isaac offers esau a secondary blessing but it is not enough having now been tricked out of the both his birthright and his blessing Esau declares his hatred for Jacob and his intention to kill him. Rebekah hears of the plot and arranges for Jacob to flee to Haran to the home of his to the home of her brother Laban. So what was the nature of Esau in the Utera struggle? The Midrash okay indicates the boys were pre pre precocious. Okay, and the children struggled together with her. They sought to run with her. When she, Rebecca, stood near synagogues or schools, Jacob struggled to come out. 
Hence it is written, Before I formed thee in, thy, in the belly, I knew thee. In Jeremiah 1.5, I knew you before I formed you, you in the belly, and before you came out of the womb. I sanctified you and appointed you a prophet to the nations. While when ye she is past adulterous temples, ye shall eagerly struggle to come out. Hence it is written, the wicked are strangled from the womb. The wicked are strangled from the womb. They go astray from the belly, speaking lies. So think about this before we go on. All right. This has a deeper meaning. The two brothers. What does this mean? Okay. You have you in the body of Christ or the Christian church. Okay. You know the word. You learn the word, but you're struggling to leave the church. You're so entwined with the traditions of man. You want to stay there because you love Christmas. You love Easter. You love Thanksgiving. You know, you don't celebrate the feasts. You celebrate man-made doctrines. This is why you're so, you know, not eagerly to come out. You're you you passing these once you go out you eventually struggle from the womb and then you know you end up going astray and you either you know become an agnostic is what end up happening so ye o israel you need to come out and the children and the children struggle with her and said if so for what am i suffering like this and she went to inquire of god in Genesis 5 22 and she went to inquire of yah the Ramez here is hinting, Rebecca was very sensitive to the inner world, the inner world with her, within her. The word Bikavav within her has the same letters as Rikavav, Aviva Savar, the murmuring deep. Rikavav Rebecca was very sensitive to the inner worlds and therefore she wanted to understand the ultimate significance of such a trying pregnancy an ordeal and even to ask Yah for what am I like for what am I like this the Jerash which is interpreted meaning it says and the children pressed in her womb and she said if such be the anguish of the childbirth for what do I need children and she went to speculate mercy before uh, Yah the sod Shem was, nice, show us, Shem was Noah's son. What's he doing teaching Rebekah's time? But in fact, Shem lived until Isaac was 50 years old. In the above verse, what was Rebekah doing? She was bringing a question in Jewish law to a rabbi for a solution, a resolution. She went to inquire of Yah, so she went to those who were engaged in the learning of Yahweh at all the time. To the teachers, Shem and Eber, they were the judges of the day in Deuteronomy 16a, and she received an answer, either in direct prophecy, but most likely through Shem and Eber. In Deuteronomy 16.8, it says, You shall eat unleavened things six days, and on the seventh day you shall be solemn, assembly to the Yah, your Elohim. You should do no work. That is so beautiful. Think about that. Once you come out of that church, the Christian church, and you come into his word, you learn the Torah, you work six days, and the seventh day you shall labor. Here, look at this. Read this again in Deuteronomy 16 a. You shall eat unleavened things six days, and on the seventh day you should be solemn assembly to Yah. You should give him all the honor and glory and praise. Your Elohim, and you shall do no work. The Rebecca's prayer. Rebecca is described as a righteous and praying effectively. This is based on an interpretation of the phrase Isaac prayed. But wait a second, why is it Rebecca's prayer? Well, which in the text likely means on account of his wife, but the rabbis translate as in the presence of his wife while she was praying 
in the Midrash, Kabbalat Shentanai, her prayer is cited before Isaac, whereas all parallel versions in the Midrash represent Isaac praying first. After recording Isaac's prayer, Mishra Chadashina returns the focus to Rebecca, including an additional prayer which is accepted. Thus, Rebecca's prayer both envelope that, that of Isaac's are directly responsible for her pregnancy. Rebecca's contractions. One tradition in Midrash Shadashane seems to be devoted to describing the contractions experienced by Rebecca, as in uh, glossing Genesis 25 22, the children struggle within her. They were descending and ascending. So you have descending and ascending in her womb like the swells of the ocean. So as you know, as you go through bad times, you get the up and down, up and down, okay? Descending and ascending in the swells of the ocean. It is longer parallel from which this is experted. It is preserved only in the 14th century Mishratic collection of Midrash and Gadal in the centers of Jacob and Esau and their perennial and internal struggle by omitting any references to Jacob and Esau and describing only the moments of unnamed foetuses in the Re Rebecca's womb, it depicts not the twins of brothers' experiences, but Rebecca's. So Rebecca was going up and down and not the children. See? The monogamous trend in Israel in the context of the homily, the unique Portrayal is Isaac presented in the Midrash of Tanay as the only one in the Paris, uh, patriarchs to pray on behalf of his wife. May be related to the fact that he is the only patriarch to forego polygamy. Uh, polygamy, uh, I guess that's pretty easy. Indeed, Midrash Chana criticized of Abraham may also include tactic disapproval of Abraham's other response to his wife, barrenness, which Isaac disregarded, engaging in polygamy by marrying Hagar in light of the passage focuses on Rebecca, described above, this is not surprising. What is more, it correlates with the Eastern Mila Midrash. Scholars such as the Isa, Isaiah Gafini had noted the rarity of polygamy in Ratz Israel, or at least monogamous trends, and evidence of this literature, it says the Shana may therefore bear witness to a community that was exposed to Babylonian trends, evidenced by this is following the annual Torah reading cycle. Yet, faithful to culture, perceptions for Ratz Israel. The Shinadi or the Parasha Atadot goes on an unusual direction in collecting and in some instances reframing Midratic traditions which center on the female biblical pro prodastic. Perhaps this is the tendency to leads, that leads the homeless distress for her, the praise in Isaac's exception behavior with regard to his wife. Nevertheless, in this case, the biblical text itself may hold the key to understanding the Midrash approach. First, Isaac is exceptional among the patriarchs for going polygamy, Even when faced with barren, a barren wife, only he relies on prayer to solve his problem. Second, the biblical narratives presents, presents uh, Rebecca an exceptionally active role, both in the story of her difficult pregnancy in which she goes to consult with Yah on her own, and in the story of the blessing of Jacob and Esau, in which she defiles and manipulates her husband. Thus, even though the focus on Rebekah, the praise of Isaac at the expense of Abraham, may have served the homilistic rhetorical needs, well, his reading of the story of Isaac's prayer shows itself to have been sensitive to textual nuance and very much in line with the spirit of not, not the letter of the biblical count. We see in the book of Joshua chapter 26, and it says, 
In the 59th year of life of Isaac, son of Abraham, Rebekah, his wife, was still barren in those days. And Rebekah said to, unto Isaac, Truly I have heard my Lord that my mother Sarah was barren in her days until my Lord Abraham, thy father, prayed for her, and she conceived by him. Now, therefore, stand up, pray thou also to God, and he will hear my thy prayer. Remember us through his mercies. So wait a second before we continue. As you can see, the wife, Rebecca, she's like, wait a second. You remember Abraham? He prayed for his wife, you know, Sarah, to be to have children, and she finally had children. So she says, go pray for our house. Pray for me to have children. So he gets up and he goes and he prays for her. And Isaac answered his his wife, Rebecca, saying, Abraham has already prayed for me to God to multiply his seed. Now, therefore, his his this barrenness must be pronounced, proceeded to us from thee. And Rebecca said unto him, But arise now, thou also pray that the Lord may hear thy prayer and grant me children. And Isaac hearkened to the words of his wife. And Isaac and his wife rose up and went to the land of Moriah to pray. To there and to seek the Lord. And when they had reached the place, Isaac stood up and prayed to the Lord on the account of his wife, because she was barren. And Isaac said, O Lord, God of heaven and earth, whose goodness and mercies fill the earth, thou hast didst take my father from his father's house and from his birthplace, and didst bring him unto the land, and didst say unto him, To thy seed, well, I give the land, and thou didst promise him to the didst declare unto him, I will multiply the seed as the stars of heaven, as the sand of the sea. Now may thy words be verified which thou didst speak unto thy father. For now are thy Lord our God, our eyes are toward thee, to give us seed of men, uh, thou didst, prom didst promise us. For, for thou art the Lord our God. Our eyes are directed toward thee only. And the Lord heard the prayer of Isaac, the son of Abraham, and the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And about seven months after the children struggled together within her, and it pained her greatly that she was weird on account of them. And she said to all the women who were there in the land, Did such a thing happen to you as this to me? And they said unto her, No. And she said unto them, Why am I, al I alone in this amongst all the women that were upon earth? And she went into the land of Marah to seek the Lord on account of this. And she went to Shem and Eber and his son to make inquiries of them and his mother in, the mat in this matter, and that they should seek the Lord in the things respecting her. And he and she also asked Abraham to seek and inquire of the Lord about all that had befallen her. And they all inquired of the Lord concerning this matter. And they brought her word from the Lord and told her, Two children are in thy womb, two nations shall rise from them. One nation shall be stronger than the other, and the, other, the, and the greater shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were completed, she knelt down, and behold, there were twins in her womb. As the Lord spoke to her, the first came out of red all over like a hairy garment, and all the people of the land called his name Esau, saying that this one was made complete from the womb. And after that came his brother, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. Therefore they called his name Jacob. And, and Isaac, the son of Abraham, was sixty years old, when they begot them. And the boys grew up to their their ninth, their fifteenth year, and they came amongst the society of men. Esau was the designing and deceitful man, and, and, de, and designing and deceitful man, an expert hunter in the field, and Jacob was a man perfect in his wise, and wise, dwelling in the tents, feeding flocks, and learning the instructions of the Lord, and the commands of his father and mother. And Isaac and his children and his household dwelt with his father Abraham in the land of Canaan, as God had commanded them. And Esau 
the son of Abraham went with his children and all their belonging to them, and they were returned there to the land of Havel, and they dwelt there. And all the children of Abraham's cocky minds went to the dwell in the land on on the east, for Abraham had sent them away from his son, and had given them presents, and they went away. And Abraham gave all that they had to his son Isaac, and he also gave him all the treasures. And he commanded him, saying, Thou dost thou not know and understand the Lord is God in heaven and earth, and there is no other besides him? And it was he who took me from my father's house and from my birthplace and gave them gave me all the delights upon earth who delivered me from the counsel of the wicked from him did i trust and he brought me to this place and he delivered me from the kassadim and he said unto me to thy siege will i give all these lands and they shall inherit them when they keep my commandments my statutes my judgments that I have commanded thee, which I shall com I shall command them. So you have two nations. Think about this now. This is even more deeper in meaning. You have two nations. What do they represent? The nation who keeps his commandments, his Torah, his instructions, and the nation who are lawless, who do not keep his commandments. The church, the Christian church, the Catholic church. They're the ones who do not keep it. So you've got the ones who keep it and the ones who don't. The ones who keep it are blessed. The ones who don't are not blessed. Now, therefore, my son, hearken to my voice and keep the commands of the Lord, thy Lord, thy God, which is I commanded thee. Do not turn from the right to the right way, neither to the right to the left, in order that they, it may be well with thee and thy children after their after thee forever so this is telling you basically keep straight on the commandments if it looks good on the right or to the left don't look at that you need to be focused on the Lord keep your eyes focused okay and it says remember and the wonderful works of the Lord and his kindness that he has shown toward us and having de delivered us from the hands of of our enemies and the Lord our God caused them to fall into our hands and therefore keep all that I have commanded commanded thee and turn not away from the commandments of thy God and serve none beside him in order that it may be well in thee and thy seed after thee and teach thy thou children and thy seed thy in order that it may be well with them forever and Isaac answered his father and said unto him, That which my Lord has commanded, that will I do. And I will not depart from the commands of the Lord my God. I will keep all the commanded, all that he commanded me. And Abraham blessed him, his son Isaac, and all his children. And Abraham taught Jacob the instructions of the Lord and his ways. And it was of, at that time that Abraham died in the 15th year of the life of uh, Jacob and Esau. The sons of Isaac and all the days of Abraham were 175 years. And he died and was gathered to his people in good old age, old and satisfied within the days of Isaac. And Ishmael his son buried him. And when the inhabitants of Canaan heard that Abraham was dead, they all came with their kings and princesses and all their men to bury Abraham and all the inhabitants of the land of Haran and all the families of the house of Abraham and all the princesses and grandees and the sons of Abraham by the concubines all his son and they buried Abraham in the cave which he bought from Ephron and the Hidi and his children for the possession of the burial place and all the inhabitants of Canaan all those who had known Abraham wept from Abraham a whole year when men and women mourned over him and all the little children and all the inhabitants of the land wept on account of Abraham for Abraham had been good to them on and all because he had been upright with God and men and there was 
not and and there arose not a man who feared God like Abraham, for he had feared his God from his youth, had served the Lord, and had God in all his ways during his life, from his children to the day of his death, and the Lord was with him, and he delivered him from the counsel of Nimrod and his people. And when he made war with the four kings of Elam, he conquered them, and he brought all the children out on the earth to the servants of God, and he taught them the ways of the Lord, caused them, caused them to know the Lord. And he formed them a grove, and he planted a vineyard therein. And he had always prepared in his tent meat and drink to those that passed through the land, and they might satisfy themselves in his house. And the Lord God delivered the whole earth on account of Abraham. And it was after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac and his children. And the Lord was with Isaac as he had been with his father Abraham. For Isaac kept all the commandments of the Lord as Abraham his father had commanded him. He did not turn to the right, to the left, to the right path which his father had commanded him. So recap, before we go on, it says, as this title was, this is before I knew thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before I formed thee, I, I formed thee. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So remember, God knew you before you were even formed. He knew what side you were going to be on, which nation. Okay, are you going to be with the nation that follow his commandments? Are you going to be on the nation that are lawless and who are not following his commandments? Are you still in the church? The Christian church, the Catholic church, the Protestant church, the Pentecostal church? Are you in the church? Or is he trying to draw you out? Ye of all these synagogue saints, those places that you've been going. And it says, what was the nature of Jacob and Esau in this struggle? As we see, this was a struggle the inner self between man, what we want to do, what we want to choose, what we want to follow, versus what God wants us to do, and what God wants us to follow. He showed us, he showed us two, two doors. We decide if we want to go to the left or to if we want to go to the right. There is no third door. It's either left or right. And we choose to stay where we want to stay. If we want to be in the church or if we want to follow God's ways. And it says, when Rebecca stood near the synagogues for schools of Jacob, struggled to come out. Hence, it is written, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. In Jeremiah 1, 5, I knew you before I formed you in the belly and before you came out of the womb. I sanctified you and I appointed you a prophet to the nations. While when she passed adulterous temples, Esau eagerly struggled to come out. Hence, it is written. The wicked are estranged from the womb. In, in the Psalms 58, 4, or the 58, 3, depending if you got the Hebrew Bible or if you got the, the new uh, King James Version or the, even the Hebrews Bible. But if you go back to the Tanakh, it's actually in 58, 3. It says, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray. From the belly, they speak lies. So as you can see, God knew you before he even formed you. He knew already if you which side you were going to be on. If you were going to be on the synagogue sent on side, that you were following those strange ways of man, or you're you're in the church, the Christian church, you're not following, you know, God's ways, you know, you're following man's ways, you know, and this is what he's trying to say is you're having that inner battle, you know, that is you. If that is you, you need to come out, you know, and stop speaking lies to yourself and deceiving yourself and saying, I'm okay. It'll be all right. I go to church on Sunday. I'm fine. God's going to forgive me. He knows your heart already. So you can't deceive him. So you need to come out and get away from that Sunday and stop being that Sunday Christian. Read your Bible. Follow his ways. Read his word. With that being said, hopefully with you were blessed tonight with today's message. Uh, as I said or before, uh, I pray for each one of you tonight. Um, and if you love this, make sure that you leave a comment, you know. And if you're not a subscriber tonight, 
go ahead and subscribe tonight so that way you get the bell and make sure you click on the notification so you know when the next uh, message is but usually i put them out on friday nights and usually it's between eight and ten o'clock at night it just depends because uh, some nights i go to prayer service i pray for everybody for each one of you and uh, there's also other events that are local that I also attend to. So this is why. But um, if you're, you know, instead of just following me, you should also be following other people. My brothers and sisters out there, you know, like Christian Truthers, uh, Justin, uh, Justin Best. And also we got Pair of the Vineyard with Adam. Um, you know, you should also listen to them too. They also have, for women, they have the sister, uh, Sister Shalom. You know, so if you don't have a home, let me know and click on send me an email and I will try and get you a home, you know, if you're not getting that fellowship where you are. So King, come out, ye O Israel, you should come out from thy synagogue, the Satan that you're there. You've been studying the wrong doctrine. Come out of that Christian church. Okay. God had known. He knows you. He's calling you out from thy church. May you be blessed with that man said. I pray for each one of you tonight. Father, I give you all the honor and glory and praise. I thank you for allowing this word to come upon us, Father. And I ask if this word is for you, anyone out there tonight, Father, that they may be blessed, Father. And if it's not for them, and if they know it's for somebody, I ask that they share it to somebody that they know who will be blessed by it, Father. As we, you know, as it says in your word, we speak the word and it comes of life, Father. Allow us to be the light of the world, Father. Until the next Shabbat, Father, I ask for your praise and glory, Father, that during this time, as you say, we shall work six days and on the seventh day we shall rest, Father. And we do not know the day or hour, but Father, we ask for your honor and glory and praise to keep us safe, Father. And until that time, Father, if we have needs, allow us to pray. As it was shown, Isaac prayed for his wife, Father. Allow us to pray for our whatever we need father we ask this in your son's name as we pray in yeshua's name we pray amen well thank you everyone tonight for showing up may you be blessed